All right, because I knew what our objectives were, some of our objectives interior, even though I wasn't quite sure what part you wanted me to play in this exterior work, I did some work on this exterior just to get a feeling for where we're heading. I modeled this whole structure because one of the reasons I modeled the whole structure, I needed to model so much of it anyway, uh, but in terms of adding something in the future on this facade. And I, I will mention with regard to that, my early thoughts are that I would be doing what I could to not lose any of these windows at all in that endeavor. Uh, but this was, these are these existing elevations or, or shots. And I did on this, uh, did add the vertical siding that you talked about. This is a typical, this is certain teeds, 12 inch board and batten. It's pretty nice. It, it has like a half inch batten look to it. And then these are the same shakes up in the gables that you talked about. I worked a little bit with this. This is this rough framing. I'm assuming this is going to get clad. Either maybe it's all clad in straight aluminum, uh, is padded out and is clad in straight aluminum, in which case these columns can can be maintained at this narrow look and that's I hope that's kind of the idea or some narrow wrap because if we wrap these in like wood it's going to take a seven and a half inch uh, square roughly and they start looking pretty chunky but I worked with that with that assumption just briefly uh, until I got some more feedback from you guys and I don't think I don't like mixing this turned bit in these more square modern looking columns so I just went like this and then I wasn't sure if that was maybe all that stuff is going to be white and there's an error here but I also dropped out those two middle columns so I didn't feel like certainly not in the stained look I don't think that they should be there uh, so I just took them out in my modeling and I experimented with bringing that decking over all the way around but I wasn't sure how you would protect that from the weather. I thought about having concrete inside and then this running this continuous band out here for some consistency. Now I really like this consistency, but I don't know how you separate where that water runs off that concrete, whether that can be effectively done. And so I, first of all, I looked a little bit at this foundation, these existing new foundation walls are, that are made of block. And here I just added a parge coat, a 3 8 parge coat of masonry, just to make that all the smooth and look like concrete. Uh, but this, and whether and this was running stone veneer around, it's not a very good texture, but that was running stone veneer around the foundation. If you were going to run stone veneer, you had talked about stone veneer on this side. I wasn't sure if you were talking about this whole facade under here. Uh, if I was going to run stone or recommend some stone on this, regardless of what you did down here, and I kind of think that's probably the most cost-effective and also effective way uh, to do it. Uh, but if you were going to run stone up here, I would kind of limit that to up three or four feet at the, at the most. So here, again with this porch, this idea was pour the concrete, but have it eight inches thick at the edge or whatever the height of this is here. It's got to come out level with that exist or I think it should be level with this existing porch surface which I think is level from here to here it runs down here and that's the only slope and then it stays at six and a half or seven or whatever it is down here all the way around this uh, structure around the corner and there is dyed stamped concrete I'm sure you're well familiar with this and something could really probably be done uh, very nicely with that I'm going to show this from overhead and so that's that this is with, with a four inch pad over like the existing four inch pad that's over that I don't know if these are back this is like six by six is here I assume whoever's done that has that where that gravel wouldn't when, when this is filled up with gravel and concrete poured over that's not gonna be a problem with that's not gonna subside and this was working with that trying to put decking all the way over it again not knowing how you would protect that uh, particularly here at the southwest corner from just getting ruined and the foundation work with stone and then going to the 8 inch edge concrete and maybe that's dyed and or stamped I mean I really think somebody could do something with dyed and stamped on that uh, but this foundation really only plays a role this foundation work here this really only plays a role when we want to extend this and capture that space 
uh, for the interior where but you can just put a, a nice plant here and this won't look too funny this seemed like the logical way to extend that band that band trim board all the way to the new porch this film does not cover talking about the stairs and how we whether this column is dropped and these are just very wide stairs here new ones perhaps with call uh, perhaps with railings on both sides notice I haven't modified that to any kind of a, a mo more modern thing or steel thing or anything like that so I didn't work with that these are the same modifications uh, looking from this uh, north east I guess or north northwest and that was adding you know putting these five and I didn't I mean this this is an eight inch beam which or seven and a half or eight inch beam which kind of asks for eight inch columns if that's going to be correct it doesn't have to be it can be like these where the four inches are under it like this uh, more vernacular but that is those and then you can see where I drop out the two middle ones and turn to white and I, this is where that consistent uh, band is around there and there's the eight inch concrete at the edge from the front end this same progression here and this is where I bring that wall, this wall here, this is where I capture that space and bring that forward. And you can have side lights here if you wanted to add side lights to that to space inside, even the final, uh, the way it works out on the inside. And this is how that capturing that space looks like, this space right in here. And we do this, and I've just made it into a closet for now. Notice also that I have not maintained this wall out here at the front of this little two step, step down. I have pushed that all the way back where it's more level with the front or more even with the front of the landing. Notice that there's room for side lights on this door system if you were to replace this door system. Inside, uh, w with regard to the stairwell, the first thing I wanted to check is whether we had any kind of uh, height clearance uh, limitations. And we really don't. We have really height room for days uh, to change things around and probably don't have to change things that much but we do have the space so I knew that wouldn't be an issue uh, going forward on this second floor though and we haven't spoke yet again since uh, our initial meeting really with regard to some of this uh, but my feeling is that that thing there has just got to go I'm not sure why it was done that way or what they were where they were going with that in any event, I just started off with squaring that off because I was able to, that was really the only way I was able to figure out uh, the framing for to hold up what needs to be held up. And while I had only roughed this framing out earlier, once I, I came back today to double check these uh, member sizes and, and actually size them all, and even though all of these members, except maybe member C up here, would pass uh, as single members here, one one member would pass. I'm just going to show everything as two members because uh, the jurisdiction requires any of these headers to be doubled. And this is what I ended up with then for the framing. It's a little larger opening, but this is what I ended up for with the framing. With we have a double member here and we have a double member here and these joists are suspended from B and B is suspended at A so this is all flush down below and then most critically this beam C this is designed where it has a bearing point here and a bearing point here and then this is cantilevered out to provide support for the, at to the, for the pathway to the attic stairs and for the attic stairs and I have accounted for all of the loads and designed all of this and all of these members pass as shown here. I don't think they would require an engineer to approve that but they may. And so these ones instead of this, because this could be just a single member sitting on that wall but because they require these all to be doubled, we'll just double that and then suspend all of these joists from it with these simple joist hangers here, a heavy joist hanger here, a concealed one here little joist running over a little joist running over here and then these ones suspended from here and then B is supported hung suspended there and supported on this stud wall down here and that's the final framing so I was sure that the framing uh, was going to work 
So at the first floor, then, this becomes the opening through the ceiling. This is early stair work here. This is really still your existing stairs in these drawings. Uh, but that closet, I said there's room for side lights here, and even if there aren't, I never like this where there's an argument here. And this was two uh, 28 or it's four foot eight, so a couple 28 inch doors. And I went to a sliding bypass doors, which are 30 inches a piece. So when they're both slid, you have 29 inches access through there. And again, I have this wall pulled back more than the original, which the original is like that, and you had about six foot in here. This moves that back as well. You still have this three foot closet there that picks up here. There will be a piece of this closet, the ceiling of this will be sloped some from these rafters out here. And again, up here, it's something like this. For the moment, I was working with something like this. And this is your existing stairway here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five down to the landing. And one of the reasons I knew that I wanted to look at reconfiguring the stairs is because right now, it's kind of code minimum. These risers are almost eight inches, and the treads are nine. I did not look at changing the tread length, increasing that, which is the minimum nine inches. But I did look at, and everything I've done in here is increasing or decreasing the height of the riser to seven and a half and having 15 risers from the first floor to the second. And I had originally thought, well, maybe we can have them down here, particularly if that wall was further forward. But this really puts this landing too high and too close to the clonk over. And so I decided I would pick the, or I decided the best idea is to pick those up on that flight upstairs. So instead of going up five from the landing, you go up six. This decreases the angle of uh, inclination by about two and a half degrees, which is something, and it's a little more gracious. Now, there are quite a few other changes though, that would be coming here. So, and this is lowering that landing. This is the new landing shown six inches down, or a riser down, so about seven and a half inches down. And I think these panels are shown in the right location, and I think this would all work out as far as reconfiguring. So I worked with this going forward with a 15 riser at seven and a half, about seven and a half, 7.43 rise to nine inch run. And pick those up upstairs like this. And so upstairs, here's how this changes. And it really doesn't, you can see the clearance through here becomes smaller by that nine inches, essentially by the nine inches. But it really is still well within code, and particularly since the only thing down here is one bedroom, the master bedroom's down here. So I didn't feel that, I thought, felt that was worth it uh, to get a little better stairwell out of it. Up here, it's from that to this. And I, pull this door way out at the same time, but we'll go, we'll, we'll be covering that further. But that's what I had started with uh, down here. We, all this framing just slides back nine inches to accommodate that extra tread at the second floor. And you go from that to this up there. Now, this is your existing, what you guys called the clonk here. And the way it is, that's actually where we need to be uh, to hold up what needs to be held up. Now, there wasn't a better way to notch this further out here and, and pull this clonk back this way. So our new framing is essentially right where that is uh, with this is an LVL and that's suspended from that LVL and this is suspended from this big LVL uh, that's, that's going over to another beam this way. So that is essentially how we have it and these I don't know what's happening here this will have to be taken apart a little bit and uh, because this will be full size full height members here and so that goes away and this is more or less you know kind of the finish uh, beginning finish end of this with no nothing special happening up here and this is that opening without any railings put up yet so once this was sort of finalized out and I assumed that we weren't going to be get ourselves involved with stairwell treatment from first floor to attic. So all of this is as existing more or less uh, just preserved like that because that's pretty much what's necessary there. Once that was accomplished though I wanted to work with railings a little bit. I know that uh, we had talked about a more modern 
kind of uh, railing, linear railings like this. And so, uh, just to get some starting point ideas, I took a look at uh, the, the big manufacturer, L.J. Smith, what they offered in these modern things. And after looking at these, almost anybody could knock these off. I mean, this cable rail is the way that if somebody does that, I would just buy all those parts. But a lot of these others, it looks like this one, it, I like this too. And maybe someone could weld those together. But they only make this for a certain rise run uh, tread ratio, if you like this one here. And these cable rails can, it looks to me like they're fully adjustable. I'm not sure about these tube systems yet. But when you go down here, this is what these parts look like up close. And then you can, it looks to me like you can mount any wooden or steel railing on the top of those things there if you're the right fasteners. Now with regard, and I looked at another manufacturer that had more flexibility, it looked like, with regard to that rise run ratio. But with both of the ones I looked at, LJ Smith and Viewline, it looked to me like there were when you are coming down from a landing like this and making this turn it looked like some of these manufacturers made this piece of wood here uh, pre-manufactured this drop of wood here but when you're coming down and turning here like this from a sloped from a stair flight to another stair flight there is a break in the railing and that is pretty consistent uh, what I found across the manufacturers and that's going to be reflected in what I end up modeling and showing you here in a minute or two. And they also make these wood ones, wood to mix. I like that personally. I like this wood mixed with, you know, whether it's mixed with cable or tube. I like that. But I just wanted to give you guys some ideas. I haven't gone down all the way through this. Yeah, these are the new suggestions. And of course you could put all of that on top of the typical uh, fitted railing on top of that if you wanted to. And you can see that's what they've done here where these are actually turns, etc. There's how those wood ones interface with a wooden railing. This this seems like it's expensive work, this rail work, having to fit those on top of there. Actually that, that actually doesn't look too bad. It's all just angular joint work it looks like to me. So that was just some starting ideas. They actually make these transition parts so it's even easier. And they're showing 684 handrail, which is a typical handrail right there. And that's all on that. I'm just going to model up one of these just for the look. I have some of this put together already. Uh, but this is really the stopper on these products anyway from this company. I don't know uh, if there are others that would make these so this might have to be put together by a person mainly because it's designed for the seven and a half rise and ten inch run and our stairs are kind of custom. I mean they're just under seven and a half the way I'm designing them now where we get the fifteen risers but a ten inch run that's we would have to make some changes because we're we're working with a nine inch run at the moment and that does seem ridiculously rigid and this is another company view rail and from what i could see it looks to me like it'll be fine you can do any kind of there's no way that they're going to make a product that is that rigid i mean these here looks like it would have to be there might be some flexibility. I haven't had time to research that, but uh, in any event, I can't imagine that someone's not making some sort of fully adjustable, because that just comes down to these and the way the tubes interface with those. So we are going to assume that we're going to be able to put together one of these kind of products and see how they mix this wood and steel. I don't know what you like. I like everything. I'm seeing here like this straight steel so you can lead that uh, so just to have a good starting point I modeled that uh, one of these and, and its variations that were needed to model this stairwell and once I was finished putting things together the way it needed to be put together and you can see now you come down one two three four five six to this same number down here and same number down here and we have 
here I brought that w lower wall forward a little bit so that we could get a code compliant three foot here and I have probably relocated this as well so that we get three foot code compliant spacing there we are still tight up here this is only 31 inches and it'd be nice if we get that to 36 inches and then our whole stairwell uh, would be code compliant up here this is how it is and this is pretty much existing except that our entry point is a little bit further back and then this is how this looks we'll look at these first this is leaving this as it is with that only this is 31 inches here and these are some uh, photos and this just shows you this one of this rail systems and you can have variations with that this door I assume this is going to be one of your regular doors and this is the thing I don't know this shouldn't be structural if it's not that brings it where it's about an inch or two above this opening over here it's so close I couldn't make it the same level so I'll put it up an inch where you have an inch or so space above your the the same sort of lintel that you've used throughout the house and kind of this flow is probably better through here as well I think this just yeah and this is the door matched up and you know what kind of handrail you use this is variable I don't know they show this in all their catalogs and I'm not sure how they're getting around the code requirement uh, for these to have returns on them so that people don't get their clothing snagged uh, but it must be code compliant because they're selling it so and this just maybe those railings are not white and those are like the treads you would specify all of these different uh, colors and textures this was the early I think this was an earlier so this is that stairwell though what I'm showing this is how I've treated it uh, going forward for a moment it just changes to wood this is just shadows same thing over here with this wood variation this is just so you get a feel for how open this makes this stairwell there's the big square opening up here instead of that crazy angle and just with some shadows and then from up here this is more or less what it is shaping up here and this is that piece of wood on the floor for just to define the top of this stairwell as right there or the top of this staircase is right there and provide a place for these things to uh, fasten down without getting involved with the carpet now you can see in that catalog I believe I talked about it this is the kind of transition they use at this sort of thing where you're turning this way they're just open like this but on this sort of thing here where you're coming along they actually sell this piece that will drop like that in any wood in many many wood species if it's from them uh, this And that said with a caveat because I saw those parts like that on that LJ Smith catalog and I mentioned in that section that uh, unless we increase our tread depth to 10 inches which I'm not sure we probably could manage that and use their product but I can't imagine someone else isn't doing something quite similar and following this a short film that might give you a little uh, even a better feel uh, for what this stairwell is like as modeled in what we're seeing so far here Once I recognized we were so close to having their code compliant and it looked like there was going to be space on both of these floor levels, first and second, to do that, uh, that's what I've done. I've increased this like this, and this is what happens. Several changes. This stays the same through here, and the staircase stays the same as well. Down six, down six, down three. But we have to build this wall out, or rebuild this wall further to the... Uh, west to get our code compliant all the way down through here and I really like that that's what we're able to achieve and I don't know if that I this is how I've done this beam across here it's just made it wider so it flushes with the front of that as I said I don't think that structure could probably just be eliminated completely 
unless you want that uh, for the you know separation of space here uh, but it might help your door width here because this door has this wall has moved out or been built out an additional five inches but your space stayed the same here because all the stairs also shifted what happened is the closet got skinnier went from six two down to five seven for us to pick up that five inches and then at second floor uh, we go from this this two foot seven width here and we get the three foot wide and this becomes three eighths this is three and here you could see it on where this happened but somewhere along the way uh, what I did is pull this wall back here and this railing goes around and you saw that through some of those photos now the still photos that I showed you in the last section here those were taken from the one that was 27 here and there were some different details here now I've pulled this stair back this we're still able to get a five foot sliding door in here and all this stays the same and this gets wider I didn't take any still photos but this is that same I'll give you the same sort of film uh, turnaround to give you a feel for this uh, some of its details The last thing I guess to cover is, you know, we have to kind of finalize this, including the dimensions that I mentioned earlier here. And then we can talk about some of this outside treatment. I will show these. I never considered, I mean, I just started with the solid lumber cladding of these columns where they ended up seven and a half. And also because of the beam. The architecturally correct thing is to have those columns the same width as the beam over. This beam is about eight inches here. And I think this one is probably a little bit more narrow than that. So we could probably use more narrow columns here and just ignore that architectural detail here if we're not going to rebuild this beam. And again, we will have to discuss how we treat the stairs here. I know that your address, I don't know, I can't remember if your address is on this road or that road, but do these stairs become all the way wide here or do they become even more narrow? Uh, here, but we can talk about that uh, going forward. This is the end of this part of the film And even as I made this film I returned here because I wanted to take a real quick look at modification of this porch uh, To give you some idea on that as far as going going forward and what you want to do there and all I did uh, as a starting point was widen these stairs to the whole thing move this column out here and added a railing across here. This is almost exceeding the code. 30 inches to grade from the surface is when they want a railing across there. You could probably get away with it right now because it's about 28 inches. So you can leave this open, but I very briefly show it with a railing across there and the stairs widened out. And so we go from something like this to something like that. Uh, the last thing I want to mention for this film and for going forward is alterations to this facade or this window system here. If these windows are going to be retained and left just as they are, or if we're going to look to expand any of that uh, glazing in that wall. Something like this with the stairs modified to the code compliant three foot wide. And this is about, you know, this was just a real quick permutation of increasing the glazing on that wall and so it goes in this quick uh, look it goes from something like this to something like that uh, so that's definitely all for now I will talk to you when I talk to you and as I said it's been fun so far and still apparently would remain some distance to go but again thanks very much and I'll talk to you soon